Hello my friends, so I hope you all are having an amazing day with the amazing blessings and with the amazing grace of God. My name is Dylan Sharon and welcome to another video. So today the title of my message will be Salvation Past, Present and Future. The past, Present and Future of Salvation. My friend, if you have gone, if you have read through the Bible or if you have uh, gone through the Bible, you may have noticed that salvation is a central theme of the Bible. My friend, if you read the Gospel of Luke chapter 19 verse 10, the Lord Jesus Christ is preaching in there, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. My friend, in here the Lord Jesus Christ is preaching at the Zacchaeus, the tax collector's house, uh, that for, for the Son of Man, that means Jesus Christ, came to seek and to save what was lost. My friend, furthermore, if we read the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 8, in there we have, uh, we can say as a kind of an elaboration about the thing that uh, Jesus Christ has preached at uh, the house of Zacchaeus, the tax collector, the Bible verse which we have read a few uh, seconds ago. My friend, the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, uh, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So my friends, I hope you understood about that. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. My friend, and also in the first Timothy chapter 2. In the first Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 to 6 the Bible tells us I urge then first of all that requests prayers intercessions and thanksgiving be made for everyone for kings and all those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness this is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all men, the testimony given in its proper time. So my friends, I hope you understood that um, this is good and pleases God our Savior, my friend, that we may live a peaceful and quiet life, lives in all godliness and holiness. We need to live a life that is filled with godliness and holiness. That is really important, my friend. This is good and pleases God of a Savior who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. My friend, God wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. My friend, in order to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth, we need to live a life that is filled with godliness and holiness. That is really important, my friend. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men, the testimony given in its proper time. So my friends, I hope through all of this you can understand uh, about uh, salvation, my friend. What, about what is uh, salvation, basically about what is salvation, my friend. So my friends, uh, we can say that the book of Romans outlines the extent of God's work showing salvation in three parts. My friend, the book of Romans um, discusses about uh, the word salvation in three parts. The three are salvation is a past accomplishment, salvation is a present process, and number three is salvation is a future hope. So my friends, today I will be reading these three to you from the Apply the Word Study Bible of the King James Version, my friend. So my friends, uh, the first one we will be going to be reading is Salvation is a past accomplishment. My friend, if you have put your faith in Christ's finished work on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins, then that means you have been saved, my friend. My friend, past tense, you have been saved. My friend, Christ's atonement has made you righteous, free to stand before God without guilt or penalty for your sins. My friend, as Paul, as the Apostle Paul told the Philippian jailer, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved 
My friend, the book of Acts chapter 16 verse 31 tells us about this. If you believe, uh, the Apostle Paul is preaching to the Philippian jailer, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. Not just the Philippian jailer, but also his whole household. So my friends, the second one is Philippian, uh, sorry, uh, salvation is a present process. My friend, being saved does not prevent present or future sins. My friend, you need to remember about this very carefully. You need to be extra careful about this, my friend. My friend, being saved does not prevent present or future sins. My friend, you should be extra careful on the things that you are doing in your day-to-day -day life. You need to make sure that are these the things that pleases God. My friend, you need to live a life that is pleasing to God. It is really important, my friend. My friend, you need to ask the guidance of the Holy Spirit in your lives and He will definitely guide you in order to live a life that is uh, filled with godliness and holiness. He will, gu he will definitely guide you in order to live a life that is pleasing to God, my friend. My friend, the Holy Spirit can give you power to overcome temptation and deal with whatever comes your way. My friend, as you trust Christ on a daily basis, you are being saved. My friend, so the third one is, salvation is a future hope. My friend, Christians look ahead to salvation's ultimate outcome, when you will be glorified with Christ. My, my friend, that is, you will be saved. My friend, uh... When you finally stand before God, you will be completely perfect, fully delivered, and judgment removed from sin's presence, restored to God's image and likeness in which you were created, and welcomed into eternal life with God. My friend, this is the eternal dimension of salvation, called the believer's hope of glory. My friend, so my friends, following. Christ involves all these three dimensions of salvation. By faith, you can celebrate having been saved from God's wrath, being now set free from sin, and later being made complete in heaven. So my friends, I hope that everything is clear and coherent in today's video. My friend, as I have said before, make sure to live a life that is pleasing to God. Make sure that you are always living a life that will greatly qualify you to inherit eternal life. My friend, as I have said before, when you are praying, or even now, ask the guidance of the Holy Spirit in your life. And He will definitely guide you in order to live a life that is pleasing to God, in order to walk in integrity, in order to live according to the powerful word of God, and in order to live a life that is filled with godliness and holiness. So my friends, I hope everything is clear and coherent in today's video. So my friends, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that thumbs up. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you today, tomorrow and always. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you.